if I now start to mix in the wet signal and bump up the feedback and filter it in, you can hear the Zen delay working its magic. What is up? Felix Fair here. I'm back with another video for the Thoman Synthesizer channel. And I don't know about you, but life is moving fast and I sometimes tend to get carried away by it. So um, I have to once in a while remind myself to slow down a bit. And two of my favorite ways to do so are creating ambient music and immersing myself in nature, which is exactly what I'm about to do today. So I'll grab my field recorder and head out into the forest. And afterwards, I'm excited to check out the MOOC Matriarch and the hopefully appropriately titled uh, Zen Delay by Erika Sins. Luckily, um, Bielefeld is a relatively small city, so even though I'm living in the noisy and buzzing city center, uh, it's just a 10 minute walk for me to head out into the forest where I'll hopefully be able to capture some uh, beautiful sounds that I can later incorporate into my music. So I'd say, let's go. Usually, when hunting for field recordings, I just walk around and listen carefully to my surroundings without any specific expectation or goal in my mind. I often record myself walking on various grounds and interacting with different materials. What I find most interesting though is to just put down my recorder and let it record for a minute or two without me altering the soundscape in any significant way. It's almost like you take a piece of external reality and incorporate it into your music. Especially when you use very complex effect chains in the end, the original recording merely serves as a random trigger that you took from nature to trigger whatever sound you actually created. Instead of using a field recorder, you could of course also use a smartphone. Mine, however, unfortunately only records in mono. If you wanted a stereo soundscape, you could just combine two mono recordings, pan one slightly to the left and one slightly to the right, and then add some reverb to glue them together and this way you could also create a stereo soundscape from two mono recordings. As I feel like I have enough recordings now and the sun is already starting to set, I'm heading back into the city to see what happens when I run my recordings through the Zen delay. Thank 
that already concludes my little jam. And now I'm gonna go over the individual pieces of gear and tell you what I did exactly. First up, we got the Zen Delay, with which I'm very, very satisfied. As you can hear, um, the field recording, which I selected from the many recordings that I made today, actually stitched it together from several recordings. It contains birds, as you can hear, and uh, uh, the wind in the leaves, and I think even my own breath at some point. And behind this in the chain, in my Ableton, there's already a very large reverb, as you can hear. If I now start to mix in the wet signal and bump up the feedback and filter it in, you can hear the Zen delay working its magic. So this is the high pass filter. Uh, you can actually set it to a low pass and band pass as well and bypass. I have it as a high pass here and I'm in delay mode 3 which is a tape ping pong so it goes uh, left and right. And yeah, I think you really have to master this one over time. Uh, I'm not quite there yet but I try to use it uh, as a transitional tool before I bring in the other sounds. I would do stuff like this. To yeah, have like more interesting transitions and then filter it out again. All right, up next we got the Moog Matriarch, which is receiving a very basic pattern. 
via USB from my Ableton. And actually the Moog, it also has a very nice stereo delay already built into it. Um, so I didn't run it through the Zen delay, but I used this one instead. And as you can see, the mix is actually 100% wet. So we are only hearing the delay and not the actual sound itself. Um, with these settings, it gave this like super spaced out, almost lullaby, kind of um, detuned, weird uh, vibe, which I really liked. And then all that I did here was basically play a bit with the envelope amount of the filter to create these more intense impacts when I leave some more of the frequencies through. That's basically it already here. And then um, lastly, the Pulse 2 is our baseline. Which I just filter in and out during the arrangement. And one other thing uh, worth noting maybe is that uh, in fact the pattern from the baseline has a different length than the pattern from the Moog, uh, which also has a different length than the pattern from the, uh, or the loop from the field recording. So we have some endless variation going on almost uh, because the loops are constantly shifting and never aligning perfectly. All right, I kind of enjoyed how that turned out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it too. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Peace out.